the Joe Rogan experience. You ever, you ever have a friend go crazy on you? Yeah. I've had friends that like legitimately lost their mind. I can't talk to them anymore. Like, like you would talk to him about events, and his version of events were just like so not what actually happened. And you go, oh, this is a person that's lost their marbles. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. You you can temporarily lose your marbles. Or permanently. Dimension. Or permanently, yeah. But I think that, like, I mean, yes, permanently, of course. There's, like... You no, know, I'm not saying through psychedelics, either. I'm no, I know, even, what you're, I know what you mean. I'm just saying people that just can't keep it together anymore, and for whatever reason, whether it's a combination of life mm-hmm. stress and uh, biological situation, whatever the fuck they've got going on, you know, uniquely in their own brain. But some people just, all of a sudden, not there anymore. Not keeping it together. Do they think they're keeping it together? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, it's broad, yeah. you know, broad range. Right. There's all kinds of yeah. It's, it sucks, man. People, the brain is an organ, and it malfunctions, and and sometimes you go nuts, and that's and you get stigmatized for it, which really sucks. Because if you like, because that just adds to the problem. Like if you, you know, I you see somebody in a cast. And you're like, oh, what happened to your arm? And they'll tell you, oh, you know, whatever, I fell down. But you you talk to someone who's been, like, hospitalized for a few weeks, and they tell you, yeah, I had to go to the hospital. I had a nervous breakdown. I went crazy, shit my pants, threw my dog through a window. <laughs> you're, like, <laughs> you're like, you know, you, you'll want, you want to be compassionate, but there's some part yeah. of you that's like, oh, now this is a crazy person. Mm. It's like, it's just the, something happened. The operating system temporarily crashed, and, I, and quite often – I think that could be a very good thing. I think that having your your personality or your ego um, or uh, crash can often mean that you were trying to be somebody that you aren't. And some mm-hmm. people invest so much energy, so much energy in trying to find Yeah, they just want to be something. You know, they they it, it, since they were a kid, their mother was telling them you should be like this, and then they try to be like this, and they hold up this thing. They're always working to hold up this giant tail feather, and it, it their arms start shaking, and then they can't <laughs> hold it up. And that's that's when they have like anger outbursts or suddenly like their friends are like, you you turned into someone that I've never met. I don't even know who that is. It's like, no, that is you met them. You met underneath the tail feather, the seething sea of <laughs> anger and disappointment and sadness. They that you met that thing that they're they're trying to avoid by looking up at this mask that they're holding up to the world. But that fucking seething sea of disappointment and anger and horror and sadness. That's where it's at, man. You got to go into that thing. And for some people, the only way they can go into that is by having a full-scale nervous breakdown because then they can have permission to dive into that into that awful vortex of darkness because underneath that vortex of darkness is paradise. Underneath that, that's love and happiness and joy and connection and tranquility and all that stuff. And everyone thinks that the way to get to that point is by avoiding this awful black forest that surrounds the Garden of Eden, which is inside everybody. It's inside everybody. It's there. It's there. And it doesn't matter. You know, you can work out and that will definitely give you a temporarily temporary good feeling. But until you address the internal structures that you haven't acknowledged, you're always going to go back to that place where you find yourself morose and depressed and angry and you don't know why. You always go back to that place until you sit with the sadness inside of you. You have to do that. What you're describing is coming out of the closet. And, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, for a lot of people, that is right? what it is, man. Yeah. It's coming out of the closet, and there's a lot of closets, there are a lot man. Of closets, there's yeah. not exactly. just the gay closet, right. there's yeah. all kinds of closets. There's the artist closet. Some people are fucking accountants, they're wearing suits and their ties on tight, and they're fucking like organized and disciplined. But inside, they're probably painters, they probably want to fucking paint, uh, they want to paint day glow mountains down at the beach. That's what they really are. But their daddy or their mommy wanted them to be a good little businessman, so they became this thing that's the opposite of what they are. This is the verse in the Bhagavad Gita. God forgive me because I've quoted it way too many times, but it's it's better to be an honest street sweeper than a dishonest king. It's better to be a happy guy brushing fucking leaves up the street than it is to be some zillionaire who inside is dying or numb or miserable. Mostly numb. Numb's the word. Most people are just numb. But as long as these people can quantify on paper, I still have a X million dollar home. My car still mm. costs X thousand yeah. dollars. This suit is an X suit. I am still ahead. I am not going to abandon all these things. As long as they don't see through the bullshit well, they, of the game they think they're winning. They you have know? to fall. Right. They ha- yeah, it's almost like you have to fall to... 
to really that's what you got to appreciate those moments when it all falls apart on you because that means you've got an opportunity to try it again. This let's take a, a new fresh perspective. This is the, well, a cool thing that at this retreat I went to. This guy Jack Cornfield said, which I really loved. What is, a great name, by the way. Yeah, with a K, <laughs> not a C. Okay. Jack Cornfield, <laughs> Mortal Kombat K. Jack Cornfield, wow. but he uh, he's really cool, man. But he was talking with a K, cool with a K. <laughs> yeah, he's with yeah, yeah, like the cigarette. Like and, and corny. No, this guy was awesome, and he was one of the things he talked about is in some religious tradition how they like hold the scriptures. A rabbi like had his students hold the scriptures over their heart and uh when they were memorizing them and they would say why do we do this and he said so that when your heart breaks they'll fall in and it's a beautiful idea which is that heartbreak is actually your ego cracking and the mm. moment that cracks you're in the experience of truth and when you're in the experience of truth that's when you can really become who you are but in, but to get to who you are it's like when you know when a bone heals the wrong way like, that's what a lot of people's entire personality is. It's like a bone that grew the wrong way. Mm. And that needs a fucking tick, a snap, a crack. You know, and we, you get that through. And a pop. <laughs> you need that, that initial fucking thing. And it's it, a beautiful analogy. And it yeah. hurts. It hurts, but mm. we're pain avoiding creatures. So we think that, so we're always running away from this pain. But the problem is, as we're running away from pain, we're still exactly in pain. It's basically like being on fire and running away from water. You're just running away from the water because you, for some, I don't know, that's a stupid analogy, actually. For, <laughs> no, <laughs> you were doing fucking... great up until that, though. Yeah. <laughs> you had a lot of great points. But it, well, it's true. Bones. You know, there's the monster in the dark, and the faster you run, the more likely you are to run into something that's actually going to hurt you, as mm. opposed to turning around and saying, oh, fuck, there is no monster. No mm. monster. You know, but you're never going to know that until you stop and turn around. Yeah. You know, and in some cases... People don't have the discipline or the the assistance or the the balls to stop and turn around, so they have to trip over something, and well, then that, there's like, oh, look, yep. that's, that's it. The that's the classic a great way to story. Put it, man. That's the classic story of someone hiding a secret and going completely out of control because of the pressure of hiding that. Right. Like that's the Ted Haggerty, who's the secretly gay guy who's preaching against gay people. Oh, Ted Haggert. Ted Hag Hag yeah, yeah, in Colorado. Yeah, that guy who was snorting meth off his gay lovers. Yeah. 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 Woo! Yeah, he was just yeah. going so far the other way. He was just so off the rails. He was crazy. being himself. He was being himself. He was a guy who likes to snort meth off of cocks. He likes to do a little meth, <laughs> and he likes to <laughs> well, that's suck a, a few cocks. But I would say he wasn't being himself. What I would say is that his his behavior was so extreme because he was seeking balance yes. between that and the other yes. bullshit right. in his life. Right. Whereas if he weren't living that, he'd be right in the middle. Right. You know? Yeah, well, to, but to get to the middle, you know, the way to get to the middle, weirdly, is whatever the behavior is that you're doing that you're so horrified about and terrified of. Sometimes the, the really weird idea is – this is like something that I like that Ram Dass says, which is like don't, if you don't feel like meditating, don't meditate. Don't force it. Don't impose this on yourself. Keep doing the thing you're doing that's upsetting you so much. Have the balls to keep doing the fucking thing that you're doing. Mm. Keep doing it. Society is going to tell you, don't be like this. Stop being like this. You have to change. That's what your parents always say. The idea is like, no, sink into what you are right now. Just be that thing. Stop resisting. Exactly where you are right now is perfect and that's a hard truth to grasp because you think right away you think yeah what about fucking jeffrey dahmer is he perfect well what about the uh, leopard when you're seeing a leopard rip apart a, a creature is that thing per is that a perfect moment i don't think the leopard fucks them and then kills them but you know what ducks do ducks are necrophiliacs are they fucking evil creatures yes we i think they are well yeah <laughs> they, they are they made that <laughs> phil robertson guy a very famous person because he invented a call for them. <laughs> ramp, ramp. And now poor gay people have to hear that a man's anus is not as good as a woman's vagina. Can you imagine if you made the choice for a man's anus and you hear this fucking big bearded fashionista with his uh, camo he on a and a bandana? He's an absolute fashionista. That's so weird. I never thought big, of that. Big bearded Christian Bible slinging fashionista. And uh, he tells you that your choice was incorrect. That in fact the woman's vagina is the better choice. The man's anus. I mean, come on, guys. But how can you say that if you haven't experienced it? Uh, maybe he has. I think he has. Again, the balance theory. Mm -hmm. I think he's so outspoken on that issue, like mm -hmm. most of these homophobes are, mm -hmm. because they're home jerking off to gay porn. That, you know, otherwise you just don't give a shit. It just cool. doesn't actually matter. Right. You know, it doesn't come up in a GQ interview. It's a duh thing, right? It's like duh already. Like, yeah. If you really care if people are gay, duh. 
Like, yeah. you really care the two guys love each other and that you are you against love? Yeah. You only like yeah. love if it's a man and a woman? Like, yeah. what the fuck, man? Really? Yeah. yeah. It's a duh. It thing. is duh. It's duh. If it you're talking duh. about men's anuses in GQ, exactly. you, maybe you've got some issues to think about. Don't, shouldn't we know? just be talking about ducks? Ducks anuses? I mean, isn't that your whole show? Do you know about ducks, ducks penises? Why you, you shoot ducks all the time, right? That's your thing. Like, let's talk, Just about, talk that. about murdering ducks. <laughs> yeah, why you got to talk about men's butts? Why are you talking about asshole why quality? Are you dragging this into butt sex. Yeah, well, the only way you can live that fake life is if it's fake. The actual, you know, this, this, uh, this puritanical ideal that they've held up, it's not natural. And they haven't been really living it anyway. They've been pretending to be living it, but being freaks in this sort of a rebound sort of a way to balance everything out. And I think that. Ultimately, that's being exposed over and over and over and over again to the point where it's not going to be a viable option anymore. Like powdered wigs aren't a viable option anymore. Yes. <laughs> you can't wear a fucking powdered wig, you know, and you can't pretend you're this, you know, Rick Santorum guy that, you know, just is a good man who believes in the Bible and doesn't want to see gays get married, doesn't want to ruin the institution of marriage with homosexual activity that's been shunned upon in the Bible. Yeah. May I quote? And you're like, oh, fucking criminy. What's going on, really? What's going on behind the scenes with you, Cat? What, yeah. what, what, what is in your head, yeah. man? I keep waiting for it to get to that point where anybody who's got a big problem with homosexuality yeah. is by default admitting to their own homosexual life. Right. Uh, but I've been waiting 30 years for America to go, come on, this is too silly to be real. Ronald Reagan? Are you yeah. kidding? That guy was such a joke. But, you know, he's St. Ronald. And the seeds he now, planted right? 30 years ago, well, even then. Well, even then there was, was a lot of criticism. I was in college with dudes though. who voted for him. But do you, do you remember the criticism, though? It was pretty open. There was a lot of people that didn't like him. I remember when yeah. he was in office. But not enough that he didn't win 49 out of it's 50 true. states in his reelection. Oh, well, listen, know? man. I'm not saying that, you know, he didn't dominate the vast majority of the, you know, I mean, there was a lot of idiots back then. But yeah. the difference between the way people look at him now and the way people looked at him then. Now. Now it's almost all glowing. When people talk about Reagan, mm. I, I hardly ever hear any criticism. Yeah, you don't hear about Iran Contra and no. Nicaragua and you don't El Salvador hear about and all Oliver, that crazy yeah, shit. Yeah, Oliver North. Oliver and North. And all that craziness. And, you know. Yeah. We, but my, po my point is that this idea that suddenly we're going to wake up and realize how ridiculous it is and it's Rick Santorum is too ridiculous to be real. It's, uh, fucking, what's her name? Sarah Palin. Mm. You know. I, I am amazed that how flexible the reality muscle seems to be, that mm. people are willing to accept this stuff that Frank Zappa was laughing about 40 years ago. Well, well, I, think, I wonder if they're accepting it, though. I wonder if I think that you watch these shows enough and it creates the illusion of acceptance. But mm. then if you if anywhere on the Internet or any, you just see this constant rebellion against that kind of um, uh, square, mainstream, homophobic, angry personality. And but you watch Fox News, and yeah, you watch Fox News, or you watch anything on TV, and it's an illusion. You know, you watch the uh, the commercials. Everything's this big illusion. You watch the commercials, and it's like people go in and buy a car and make it, it seems normal. It seems totally normal that people are going in to get deeply in debt to the banks. That all seems incredibly normal. But then more and more on the internet, you see like uh, people rebelling against this and showing how the bankers, like the whole system, is this fucked up thing. And emerging things like Bitcoin, which are like slowly moving the energy away from it. I don't know. I I know what you mean. I don't think. It's it's going to be a sudden thing. I think it's going to be more like a just a gradual shift as people just stop watching TV. That's that's going to happen. People are just going to, you know, I drive down the street billboards for fucking um, like Amazon.com shows, you know, like billboards for shows that aren't really controlled by these big networks. Netflix. Netflix. Hulu. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, but I, isn't Amazon just another big network? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a network or it's a international conglomerate or whatever it, it is. It's big money. It is. But you're right. But, it, but that's just the billboards. Media. The reality is it's you're not. Right. The, but the, yeah, but it's not. It's not right because the media is a very different thing. The media where you're talking about television, you're talking about a very hard thing to get into. The media when you're talking about an internet, you're talking about right. an incredibly easy right. thing to get into. Literally open to almost anyone with an internet connection. You can make a YouTube video. It doesn't cost you a goddamn dime. Yeah. If you have a laptop that has a camera on it, you talk into it, you can make a YouTube video. That 
Yeah, that's a big change. That's yeah. not just a big change. That might be the biggest change in human history. It might be the biggest change right. since a monkey ate a mushroom. Right. That well, might or be certainly the since the printing press. The right? printing, yes. printing press More, was a major. Uh, I, I, for sure, giant. You know, and, and similar in the sense that it, it took the power of communication away from mm. very few and gave it to a lot more. Right, so and that's sort of one of the more fascinating things about this is that there, is, you know, even if Amazon does put something online, it's no better than I Justine, who has like you know mm. forty five fucking billion right. followers, and she every video she put, you know, there's people like that that just became famous through the internet. Yeah. Jenna Marbles is another one, right? She yeah. she's got like millions and millions and millions of hits. Okay, mm. yeah. Here's what it is. Here's what it is because I, I I've just been reading. Sheldrake's new book, um, Science Set Free, and he talks about morphic resonance or something. And I know you have some, I think you've, you're you skeptical about Sheldrake, but uh, I, it's like when you just have TV, TV is a tuning fork. And when there was no internet and it was just TV and it was a depiction of here's what a family looks like, here's what people tend to, it's a corporation saying, here's what people do when they're healthy. And that creates a tuning fork effect, which is like if you're watching it enough, you're going to either resonate with it or, or, or and, and feel like, yes, I'm doing great. I have a wife and a house mm-hmm. and a car and a job, and that's great. I'm in tune with what everyone else is doing. But that's an illusion. That's never been what everyone else is doing. It's just what massive conglomerates are sending out there, um, either in the form of hypnotic content that keeps you glued to your seat as you watch corporations try to get you in debt to buy cars, you know, it's, it's, it's generally, it's just, it's, it's, uh, the whole thing is just a, a, a tuning all of society, uh, in a way that society maybe isn't meant to be tuned at all. And so with the internet now, you have all these different smaller tuning forks, you know, your podcast is a tuning fork. People tune into the stuff that you talk about and the different people that you bring on the podcast, send out information that causes a new kind of tuning to start happening. So that's why when you watch like Huckabee, you'd really feel like you're like listening to somebody sing off key. Because you're not resonating. You're not resonating. You've been tuned into a whole different thing, which Mm. is what the internet's, I think, one of the major things the internet has done. You know, you get these communities, Reddit. You can get tuned into the Reddit frequency Mm -hmm. quite Mm -hmm. easily, where suddenly it all just starts making sense. And that is why the, you know, the Duck Dynasty guy or any of these uh, weirdos who are... um, um, who are just ultimately just angry people, that's why they seem so fucking crazy. Or they play angry people on TV, right? Because I think a lot of these people aren't even, you know, like the, the right-wing politicians. That doesn't work with the Duck Dynasty guy. The Duck Dynasty guy has been giving speeches like that for years at these yeah. biblical retreats and stuff. He's been doing that for, there's videos. Oh, that's his real shtick. He's not. He's a yeah. fire and brimstone, God-fearing Christian man who was living on the wrong side of the law and Jesus at one point in time and then turned it all around and wants to let everybody know uh. about the evils of sin. He's an old dummy. That's what he is. He's an old dummy that <laughs> That's loves dick. That's a dicks. scientific name for him. Yeah, he's an old dummy that probably <laughs> just one time sucked a dick and liked it way too much. <laughs> or someone sucked his dick and it's his favorite yeah. moment. Oh, um, he looks God. back on his childhood and he's turned it into, you know, a safe. career. <laughs> I bet he was hunting Satan. ducks when it happened. I bet sure, he was hunting. They're in that duck blind. They're all liquored up no, on moonshine. He cocaine. wasn't hunting ducks. I bet right when he came into like some guy's mouth years ago out in the, out in the fucking the duck blind. swamps. He saw That's a duck. That's why they call it a duck blind. Yeah, he <laughs> saw it. Duck and the oh. combined pleasure and shame mixed inside him. He's right. like, I'm just gonna kill ducks from now on and never think about this. You ducks, you didn't see shit. Ka-doosh, ka-doosh. Your mother didn't see shit. Your father didn't see shit. Nobody saw shit. Ka-doom, 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 ka-doom. Can you imagine if that's really what it was all? It was just a duck saw him get his dick sucked by a guy and he's like, fuck that. It didn't yeah. happen. It didn't happen. I need to kill ducks. <laughs> I think that's something like that happened, man. It's something like that happened. Yeah. But you know, oh, man, God. like what you do with with you know, uh-huh. sex at dawn uh-huh. creates a resonance where it's like it's a it's a shame reliever. It's a shame reducer, man, because your book, I think it has been it's such a compassionate book for people who are stuck in monogamous relationships and feel guilty about the fact that they are attracted to other people. And I, that's like that guilt used to be a normal guilt. That was actually considered like, oh, something must be going wrong with your relationship if you're thinking about fucking other people. And your book makes shows like, no, actually that's just nature happening through you. You don't have to feel guilty about it or like something's off balance in you it's just completely normal it doesn't mean you have to go and fuck other people but at least now you don't have to feel like i must not love her anymore or she must not love me anymore what's that have to do with fucking ducks 
country well, music songs. <laughs> <laughs> That's the glue. Yeah. The glue that connects C- these two music. fucking ducks and, and the sadness you have yeah. for not wanting to be monogamy. Yeah. yeah. Country music. Country, country music, music. You're right. That's the you're glue. Right. Yeah. It keeps it all together. It's the glue that holds the... Holds That's it. why you need to listen to Phil Robertson and uh, uh, that, that goddamn communist... A and E that puts them on is that what it's on? Is it I on E and E? Isn't that hilarious? So. It's on A and E. A and E used to be like fucking masterpiece theater and shit. <laughs> they yeah, have, like, they used to have like you know arts and entertainment. <laughs> yeah. They used to have this you know interesting, fascinating programming that stimulated the mind. Now that it, don't sell cars. Not now anymore. it's anal entry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now it's fucking you know uh, people that found a storage box what's in this storage box (laughs) well i bet there's a lot of good stuff in there i bet there's nothing in there more after the break yeah yeah i wonder what how much you take for that (laughs) 500 i can't give you five i can give you three i gotta i gotta get at least four i don't know cut to commercial the narrative arc i'll tell you this is my last offer (laughs) and i'm being serious cut to commercial wow i wonder what his last offer is gonna be (laughs) Uh, he got him down to three. <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs>